<laughs> Hi, my name is Mandy. I'm a sophomore at the University of Connecticut and a PMV major. My Holster's project this past summer was on utilizing deep learning to aid in the analysis of a social learning task in Long Evans Rats. So a little bit of background about um, observational learning. It's defined as a change in behavior that follows the observation of another animal performing a task rather than personally performing a task. And this is a very important skill to develop in the wild because it can allow for an animal to have a higher chance of survival. Um, for example, these are two instances where that's possible. The first is a baby chimpanzee learning how to use tools from its mother. And the second is a lion hunting a gazelle. A lot of baby lions learn how to hunt for their food by watching the parents. And these are just two instances how observational learning can be beneficial for survival in the wild. And so in my experiment, I decided to use two different types of rats, um, a demonstrator rat and a observer rat. Um, shown below is the observer rat and on top is the demonstrator rat. These two rats were separated by a operant chamber with a partition in the middle and this partition allowed the observer rat to observe the actions of the demonstrator rat. So the demonstrator rat in this experiment um, knew what it had to do, um, while the observer rat had to simply learn how to do an action by following the actions of the demonstrator rat. So um, on the upper part of the operant chamber, we have the demonstrator rat, and on either side of the demonstrator rat are two lights on either side of the wall. Um, when the experiment would start, one of the lights would turn on and the demonstrator rat was responsible for going over to these lights and performing a nose poke. And once it performed a nose poke, it would receive a sugar pellet as a sort of food reward. And on the bottom half of the chamber is the observer rat. And when it began its trial, um, it had two lights on either side of the wall and both would turn on. And the goal of the observer rat was to go to the light that was on the same side of the wall as the demonstrator rat. And if it went to the correct light, it would receive a food reward. Um, if it went to the opposite side, it would not receive a food reward. And this was done to help stimulate observational learning in an operant chamber. So this is just an example of how the trial would go like. Um, at first, a stimulus light would turn on. This was kind of just an indication to the demonstrator rat that the trial was, starting to, was beginning to start. Um, then there would be a light that would turn on, either the, left, the light on the left or the light on the right. Um, this would change based on the trial and is totally random. And so in this case, the light on the left would turn on and the demonstrator rat would go over to the light on the left and perform a nose poke and receive a sugar pellet. Um, afterwards, a stimulus light would turn on on the bottom half of the chamber. This was an indication to the observer rat that the trial was going to start. Um, and then finally, um, both lights would turn on on the bottom half of the chamber. And so in this case, the uh, observer rat went to the light on the left, which was the correct answer because that was the same light that the demonstrator rat had gone to and it received a sh uh, sugar pellet. So what I specifically wanted to study in my project and incorporate was kind of study the underlying processes that contributed to efficient uh, observational learning. So basically, what specifically was the observer rat doing while trying to imitate and study the demonstrator rat? So I studied three different variables. I studied the mean heading angle of the observer rat and the demonstrator rat, the percentage of time the observer rat spent looking at the demonstrator rat, and the mean, dis mean distance between the observer and demonstrator rat. And so I incorporated the software called MATLAB, and it's this type of program that can extract this kind of data by looking at the videos of the trials we have present. So these were my results. Um, this was just looking at mean heading angle. We found that throughout the entirety of the whole trial, there was a higher um, average heading angle in correct trials versus incorrect trials. Um, and then we looked at two separate points of the uh, experiment. This was when this was before the demonstrator rat had started to respond when the stimulus light was just going on. And the second was when the uh, nose poke light went on and the demonstrator was getting ready to respond. We found that um, in the middle graph here, um, before the demonstrator rat was responding, that there was a higher average, uh, there was actually no little to no difference between the incorrect and correct trials in terms of heading angle. But in terms of heading angle, um, when the demonstrator rat, rat was actually performing, there's a higher average heading angle in correct trials versus incorrect trials. So this kind of showed us that this last image here, the point where um, the nose poke light went on, this was actually the period of time when the most learning was actually starting to occur. Um, and this was my second set of results. This was the variable of percentage of time facing. Throughout the entirety of the trial, we found that there was a higher percentage of time that the observer rat was looking at the demonstrator rat in correct trials versus incorrect trials. And in the middle graph here, we have the same two 
points as shown before, there was little to no difference when um, the before the demonstrator rat had started to respond, and there was no difference between correct and incorrect trials. Um, but in this last last picture we have here, there was a higher average percentage of time facing in the correct trials versus the incorrect trials. So this kind of reiterated what I said before about how um, this point of the trial was when the most learning was starting to happen for the observer rat. And then lastly, we have the mean distance. We found that um, on average in the f entirety of the trial, there was no difference between the correct and incorrect in terms of the distance between these two. And this was probably because um, while looking at the uh, results from before the demonstrator was starting to respond, there was a much higher distance between the two rats in correct trials and a lower distance in incorrect trials, which is not what we expected. But when the demonstrator rat had actually started to respond, there was a, a little difference um, in distance in centimeters between the two incorrect trials and a larger distance in centimeters in, in the incorrect trials. And so this graph was kind of almost like an average of the two. And we can also see this with the uh, images present in these two rats are at a much higher distance between the two and they're much further apart but once the rat uh, once the light turns on and the rat begins to respond the observer rat starts to come closer in order to observe the demonstrator rat. So this was just a summary of my findings we found that the process of learning seemed to take place uh, once the demonstrator rat was actually starting to respond and the nose poke light turned on um, there was a higher average mean heading angle over correct versus incorrect trials when the demonstrator rat was responding. There was a higher um, percentage of time the observer rat was looking at the demonstrator rat in correct versus incorrect trials when the demonstrator rat was responding. And there was a shorter distance between the two rats over correct versus incorrect trials when the demonstrator rat was responding. Um, so implications for the future. So these were only three variables that I decided to, decided to study that contribute to observational learning, but there are plenty of other processes that are also present that I didn't um, examine, but I hope to examine my next uh, couple years at UConn. Um, also, the process of observational learning isn't one that is specific to animals. It happens in humans as well. And so hopefully in the future, we can apply these um, apply our learning about observational learning in rats to the human subjects as well. And for a lot of humans who are suffering from autism spectrum disorder, they, they suffer with um, social deficits and learning at a young age. So hopefully um, better understanding this can help to therapies in the future to implement at an early stage. And so I'd just like to say thank you to the Holsters program, Mr. and Mrs. Holster for the contribution, the honors program, as well as the Marcus Lab for giving me the opportunity to present my research and uh, do it this summer, um, and also continuing to further my interest in the sci psychological sciences. Thank you.